Now let's try to understand uh, the individual risk model wherein we are trying to model a portfolio which is consisting of a fixed number of risks. Probably it's a, I can look at it as a much, much simplified version corresponding uh, or when I compare it with uh, a collective risk model where the number of risks was not fixed in number, right? And uh, here we make a few more assumptions that whatever are these individual risks, they are independent of each other. Means when I'm talking about the risk, probably I look at it uh, with respect to the number of policies which can give rise to claims, which may or may not give rise to claims. So I'm looking at all these various risks are independent of each other. The claim amounts here may not be identically distributed at all, need not be identically distributed. They may be, they may not be, which means each one may be having a separate distribution. Each one may be having a separate mean and separate uh, variance. Each individual may be having a separate mean and a separate variance. But one more important thing that I want to look at is the number. It's a fixed number. So the number of risks or the number of policies that does not change during the period. So if I'm talking about, uh, uh, let's say, a one-year kind of an insurance uh, score, the number of risks is going to be fixed. And also, this model typically uh, takes into consideration that uh, maximum of only one claim can be made, which means this kind of a model is more and more suitable for term life insurance policies because the claim is at the max once and after the claim has been made the policy is ceasing to exist whereas it may not be applicable for majority of the general insurance policies because uh, there can be more number of claims in case of a general insurance policy in a year and once the claim payment has been done, it does not necessarily mean that the policy is coming to a close. So there can be n number of claims that could be made, but this model is restricting or is restricted to only a maximum of one claim to be made. Let's try to understand the simplified version of the model. Let me look at the aggregate claim amount through this wherein I'm still looking at Y1, Y2, so on, Yn. But here we are talking of n number of risks altogether. Right, I'm talking about uh, n number of risks. And this n is a fixed quantity. It's not a random number. That's the reason I'm denoting it with uh, a smaller n. n is a fixed number of policies. And each Yi is the claim for the ith risk, whatever is the claim amount that uh, for the ith risk and n is talking about the number of risks. So it might very well be possible that yi may be zero. If, if the ith risk is not uh, giving rise to any claim, so some of these y1, y2, yn, they may be zeros also, right? And uh, the number of claims now here, if I go a little bit more, the number of claims each risk is making is either zero or one. So which means it is binomial in nature. And the probability that each risk will make a claim where as the distributions are different for each, I say QI. So basically it is like each risk is following a binomial distribution, the, the typical number of uh, claims, right? The distribution of the number of claims or distribution of uh, 
distribution of the number of claims is purely a binomial distribution with uh, n equal to 1 and the probability of uh, occurrence of a claim equal to qi. So the typical ni is following a kind of a binomial distribution in this case with uh, n equal to 1 and uh, p equal to qi. Now let's say the, the actual claims, the, the claims that each of them is making xj, let it follow some kind of a distribution. Now if n is following a binomial distribution, what we typically see is s will follow a compounded binomial distribution. Right, S will follow a compounded binomial distribution and let's say for the claim amounts for each of uh, the risks, if I say Xj is the claim amount that each of the risk is making, I will typically uh, see, okay, mu j is the mean of it and sigma squared j is the variance of Xj. And probably wherever required, I can even uh, take as fj of x is the distribution function for the same. And here, now if I try comparing this model with respect to the collective risk model, right? Now I want to compare this model with the collective risk model. What are the few limitations that are coming here? The number of risks is clearly specified. Number is clearly specified. N risks. Right? Number of uh, risks that are is fixed in number. Whereas in a collective risk model, N was assumed to be a random number. So we did not specify the number of risks or we did not specify that it is fixed. So it was variable, it was a random number. So this is becoming more and more restrictive. Again, the number of claims that are made by each of the risks, here we are restricting it to either 0 or 1. In a collective risk model, we did not even talk about that dimension at all. We were looking at only the total number of uh, claims and uh, their focus was not on the risk, the focus was more on the claims. And here we are making that the individual risks are independent. But there we have made an assumption that it's not the risks that are independent, it's the claim amounts that are independent. So even if it is from the same risk, the individual claim amount, we have made them as independent. Now, this is where let's go ahead. Now I know the distribution of Ni for each, I mean the number of claims that are made by the ith risk. I know that it is binomial with a n of a 1 and a probability of Qi, which means expected value of ni is going to be np which is qi and variance of ni is going to be np into 1 minus p which is qi into 1 minus qi. These are the expected value of uh, ni as well as uh, uh, expected value of uh, ni as well as uh, the expected value of uh, uh, the variance of n. Now I know that uh, the expected value of xi is mu i. I have made an assumption and the variance of xi we have taken it as sigma squared i. Now what I really want to look at is for the compounded distribution. So expected value of yi what is that? It becomes expected value of n times expected value of xi. So it directly goes as n, np m1, which is nothing but np in this case is qi times m1 is nothing but mu i. So for expected value, it comes out as qi m, mu i. 
Whereas when I want to look at the variance of yi, it comes out as np m2 minus np squared m1 squared. Now np is the mean. Mean here is qi. m2 is sigma sigma i squared minus np squared which is nothing but n p squared for me is q i squared m1 squared m1 is mu i squared or the variance uh, variance of s comes out as expected value of n times m2 minus m1 squared plus variance of n times m1 squared. Let me try it out now. Expected value of n is qi. m2. m2 is uh, sigma 1 squared minus m1 squared. m1 is mu i squared right plus variance of n variance of n is qi into 1 minus qi times m1 squared which is mu i squared let's simplify it qi sigma 1 squared minus qi mu i squared plus qi mu i squared minus qi squared mu i squared so if this is going up, this is coming out as qi sigma i squared minus qi squared mu i squared. So this is what is coming out to variance of y, uh, yi. Right, this is uh, coming out to if I am looking at uh, the variance of uh, yi, this is coming out to be this much and uh, now probably I can very well uh, take it with respect to uh, the S. Expected value of S comes out to the summation of all the QI mu I whereas the variance of uh, S comes out to the summation of QI sigma I squared minus QI squared mu I squared. Now this comes out because they are uh, uh, they are uh, independent. I can very well sum them up to come out with uh, because there is no correlation between them. A simple summation of them will give me uh, the overall variance as well as the overall expected value. And in case they are in case they are purely uh, identically distributed wherein qi equal to q, sigma i equal to sigma. In that case, it's a simple summation. Expected value of s is going to come out to nq mu and the variance of s is going to come out to nq sigma squared nq sigma squared plus nq into 1 minus q mu squared. Right? This is what is going to be uh, simplified with respect to uh, the individual risk model. So here what we really need to understand is the basic uh, assumptions and the way in which it is deviating from the typical regular uh, uh, collective risk model. What are the uh, various limitations to this particular model and how do I compute the mean and the variance in this kind of a model. All these things uh, we need to be comfortable with. All right.